Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking all about marble. Is it practical? Should you use it in your home? And how do you look after it? So I have one of the world's leading experts on this subject with me, Becca from Athena Stonecare. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you so much for having us. First of all, my main question is, is marble practical? It's what everyone wants to know. It is, and it's something we get asked all the time, and absolutely 100%, marble can be a really practical choice of stone. In fact, any natural stone can be. Um, one of the main things that I would always say to somebody about having natural stone is that there are practical options. Um, so it might not be practical to have a highly polished floor in the entrance of your home if you've got four young children and two dogs. Mm -hmm. However, there are options when it comes to natural stone. And so one of the things we always say to people is consider the finish, consider the maintenance of that stone before you go for it. Hello, my name is James Simmons. I'm one of the directors here at Gerald Culliford Limited. We're a company that's been established for 50 years and we are one of the leading wholesalers here in the UK for marble, granite, all natural stones. And we supply the rough stone, rough stone being polished or honed or matte finished, um, various textures to the stone masonry industry who then fabricate and cut, install, um, worktops, flooring, cladding, um, small cut size jobs to large hotels. We as a company are very sort of aware of the ethical side of um, sort of bringing natural stone in. Um, we make sure we bring in materials um, and uh, buy materials from uh, good solid companies that have been running for some time that know where their materials and products are coming from. Uh, we deal with a, a company in Norway called Lunds um, and they are uh, one of the best sustainable companies sort of in the natural stone industry um, and once a quarry has opened um, and worked for so many years, everything literally down to the sort of the flora of fauna is all put back. Um, and they really sort of pride themselves on that. And we pride ourselves on making sure that where we're buying our products from are coming from sustainable sort of sources um, and, company, and ethical companies. Greens seem to be back. Greens and pinks are, are proving very popular again. Um, and we are seeing more of the marbles being used in kitchen environments um, and more flooring, cladding. So marble does seem to be sort of uh, coming back to life a little bit more than um, it has done in the last sort of five years or so, which is great to see. But the white, the white marbles, the grey marbles, so the Carrara and the statuary are still so popular. There's, there's two ways most people go with choosing stone. Um, you initially go to kitchen showrooms, um, look online, look through magazines um, and choose your kitchen first. Uh, kitchen cabinets, you always have an idea of the cabinet colours and things like that that you want. Um, and then once they've done that, they come down here and choose a top to work, whether it's mar marble, granite, quartz or one of the other products. Um, the best way, in my opinion, is to choose the stone first. Come down here first. Um, or look online, there's amazing uh, images online of various materials. Decide if you want to go the natural route or the quartz route. Um, choose a piece of stone that you love, that you fall in love with. It's a piece of art, essentially. Fall in love with the piece of stone that you've, you've selected. Then go and choose the colours of the kitchen cupboards, the flooring, the paint colours of the walls, um, and base it all around the, the worktop. Um, it's, it is an expensive part of the kitchen, but it's, it can be there for life and it is a piece of art, it's, so enjoy it. Um, and that's always, the, I always find the best, best way to go. Over the years, lots of people have moved away from granite to quartz because quartz is supposedly indestructible and that's what the quartz companies, these big quartz companies have, have been promoting. Marble is a little bit softer. Um, it can stain, it can scratch but that's okay. There are products out there that can clean it. They're not as hard wearing as everyone makes out. Yes, they are brilliant and they're very, very good uh, for their purpose, but granites equally are, are as strong. Um, and it just comes down to 
understanding what you're sort of going to choose, whether it is a marble, a granite or a quartz, and understanding its own limitations. Um, I found that so interesting. One of the things that I learned by, by having you guys in my home and you're restoring all the stone that I've got in my house right now is that honed is more practical than polished because I always thought the opposite. I thought that by having that highly polished finish, it would sort of repel any moisture, any dirt, whereas the honed finish, it might be slightly more open, slightly mm. more porous and stains would sink in, but actually that's the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. And to an extent, the more you polish the finish, um, the more you polish the stone, um, it, it, it will tighten up that surface ever so slightly. However, um, the sealant that you use on a honed or a polished finish is exactly the same. It's what we call an impregnating sealant. And so what that does is it, it sinks into the stone and it binds the capillaries of the stone within. And so it protects the stone from within. In both cases, you're actually left with a, a vulnerable surface. So you, there's, there's almost nothing that you can do to prevent your marble from being vulnerable to scratching and staining unless you just never ever walk on it or look at it or use it. So let's talk about stone restoration. That's what you guys are such great experts at. How often do you have to have your floor or your natural stone in your house restored? So that's something that actually is um, really subject to um, kind of personal preference. Um, we would usually recommend clients that they have a look at their floor 18 months to two years. Mm -hmm. um, at that stage, usually, um, th that kind of is when your sealant will start to degrade. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when actually you need to look at reprotecting your stone. Mm -hmm. So to reprotect your stone, it's either going to need a deep clean or a small restoration in order to bring it back to look in perfect condition to be resealed to protect to help you to then maintain it a little more easily. If you were to give three of your top no-nos for your stone, do not do this, for people to remember, and your three top do this, what would you say they are? So my top three no-nos for natural stone is um, do not put anything acidic anywhere near your natural stone. So that might be a lemon juice, that might be viacal, just don't do it. It will damage your stone. Um, we also hugely recommend that you have some form of matting at the entrance of your property um, because the biggest thing that is going to scratch your floor is people bringing things in from outside. So mm -hmm. not everyone wants to have a shoes off policy, yeah. um, but you just want to minimise that as much as possible. Um, and my third thing would be to not over wet your natural stone. So whether that is um, when you're cleaning or in a bathroom, you just want to keep that stone as dry as possible because stone is porous. Um, and so you just don't want to leave it vulnerable. As an interior designer, I have been quite nervous of using natural stone in my clients' projects because I don't want to get a phone call in a year and a half's time with a client really upset that I specify something that isn't practical. So. If, no, I'll admit I've gone more towards the porcelain side or really made mm. sure that they're definitely committed to the maintenance. Um, so for me, it's so nice to know that I can use all these beautiful materials in yeah. my clients' homes. All I need to do is arm them with the information of how they maintain it and send them to someone like you at Athena Stenka. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a bit of the grand tour then, James. Yeah, of course, yeah. So we have marbles on this side here, granites and quartzites, natural quartzites on this side. As we were discussing earlier, Arabescato, two different types there. They are trending uh, so well at the moment. Um, new quartzites like the Blue Roma. Um, we're selling a lot of that at the moment. And these new quartzites, they're slightly harder. Um, still a little bit porous, but uh, you can't scratch them. And they're so, they're pieces of art, you know, they're, they're truly wonderful. But you've got to come and have a look in here. There's some awesome materials. There's this material is probably one of my favorite materials. Yeah, I bought this during uh, lockdown um, and it's a material called Amazonite from uh, Brazil. Um, it is a made up of pure feldspar. So it is uh, feldspar and quartz, these huge crystals. Um, are just solid feldspar crystals with small quartz running around them. 
and it is just an amazing natural color. Um, it really is a very special piece of stone. Um, and it's been selling really well. It's uh, because it's just, it's the perfect example. Um, we've got a beautiful white onyx. Uh, this is the ivory type of white onyx. So it's got that lovely lineation to the, the pattern and the veining. Um, all can be backlit, so again, a perfect example of that material. Um, so this is where we keep a few more of the, the interesting, interesting materials. Um, and this material here, which is a material called Luana, this is the red type, um, and it also comes in a beautiful green. Um, the green part of the quarry has been closed for a couple of years now, but we've managed to find one of the last remaining blocks in Italy, so that's arriving uh, in the new year, so that's going to be exciting to see that. Um, James, can you give me a reminder of your website? Find yeah, um, you can, we've got a website, uh, www.geraldcullerford.com, um, and yeah, all the images of all the materials that we've got here are online. Um, and there's also some good examples on there of uh, kitchens and other design features that we've managed to use some of the products um, for uh, through various architects and designers. So it's certainly worth a look. Hi guys, how's it going? Yeah, good. Good. We just started the last section. Awesome. So um, what, what are we doing here? What's happening? So we've got the grinding diners on at the moment with the extra weight. Yeah. And what we're looking to do is even up the height of the tiles. So you can just see along here, mm -hmm. this tile is just slightly higher than that one. Yes. So what we're trying to do is just flatten it out so that when we get to a polished finish, it's all a bit more even. Okay. Actually, I've noticed that on the section that you've done already is that all the grout is the same level as the stone, and I quite like that. It looks really smooth. Will it stay like that? Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's what, what we call our like, full restoration treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so we just grind everything so it's completely flat, um, especially when we get to a polished finish. If you don't do it, you've still got a step or lippage, we call it, um, in the tiles. If you try and get a polished finish with that, you end up with like a picture framing okay. where the low side um, of the lippage stays shinier than everything else. Yes. Um, because the diamonds we've got on here, they sort of bounce down and create like a scratch in the tile. Mm -hmm. You polish it up, it doesn't look quite as good. So you can actually okay. see wow. almost some of the diamond in the metal. Yeah. It's and hard to believe that it doesn't make mess when you look at this kind of equipment, but we were talking about earlier how there is no dust whatsoever. Like we've had all the doors yeah. open and there's no dust in the house. Yeah, yeah. So everything we do is a wet process. Um, so the diamonds don't burn out and you don't mm -hmm. scorch the top of the stone. Um, so we just add water as we're going and then back it up on one of the wet pickups. Um, so once we've gone through those two, we then go on to the resins, yeah. which are um, a bit less aggressive. Mm -hmm. So it's still the same grit level, but what we're doing is we're just getting the scratch pattern out from these, because these put scratches in the floor. Yeah. And then um, every stage you go on there, it just gets finer and finer okay. until you get onto the polishing pads and get onto this sort of finish. Um, so it's still scratched, but the yeah. scratches are so fine that it actually refracts the light and gives you that, that level of reflection. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's always got like a sort of leathered finish. You can see a lot more of the stone, the beauty of the stone, whereas before I didn't really notice any of those aspects. Yeah. And how long does the sealant take to um, sort of set? Is, can we like walk on it or do we have to leave yeah, it for a so, few hours? Um, we all just use water-based sealants now. Okay. So as soon as it's dry, you can walk on it. Um, it takes about 24 hours to cure. So yeah. we just tell people to not mop it okay. for 24 hours. But other than that, usually 15 minutes after you've done it, you can yeah. walk on it. And no nasty smells or anything? No, no, all VOC-free, so all eco-friendly stuff. Brilliant. I thought I wanted to go for the honed finish, but it was interesting seeing it in a large expanse in a sort of darker property. It just felt like I didn't realise how much this bounces the light and makes the ceilings feel a bit taller, having that reflection on the floor. Brilliant. Well, it's looking so good. I can't wait to see it all finished and dressed again at the end. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more behind the scenes, more tips and tricks, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.